Welcome to The Great Outdoors and today we're going to look at how we will um, understand how to manage sustainable ecosystems and we're particularly going to focus on what makes ecosystems sustainable so we're looking at what is sustainability and how do we make ecosystems sustainable and we're going to evaluate some of the strategies used to conserve ecosystems and evaluate means to see whether they work or not uh, so let's have a look at what sustainability is now sustainability is managing the environment so that it provides what we need for today as well as in the future so we need to have enough resources for what we need right now but we also don't want to damage the ecosystem or the environment for the future and because we're not a hundred percent sure what the future holds um, we have to try to manage and make a good guess about what's going to be needed in the future so if we are not living sustainably we're going to run out of resources because the environment gets damaged and this might include animals or plants becoming extinct and extinct means that the animal or plant is gone forever. So you're probably very aware of some things that have gone extinct. It could include um, mammals like the Tasmanian tiger or the Yangtze River dolphin. Um, it includes birds like the dodo or the great orc of a giant mower or um, amphibians like uh, the, the golden toad. Uh, but it can also include plants. Uh, this is a plant uh, called Bennett seaweed. It's a red seaweed and it was found in uh, Sydney Harbour. Um, but it isn't found there anymore. It's extinct. Uh, and that's probably because of pollution of the harbour, overfishing, overuse, development of the shoreline in the harbour has destroyed its habitat. So if we don't manage ecosystems sustainably, we will destroy habitats, we will pollute, and we will make some parts of these ecosystems. Uh, disappear forever. So if we have high levels of biodiversity, this will allow an ecosystem to be more resilient to change. Biodiversity is the range of different organisms. So if we have high levels of biodiversity, so lots of different plants, lots of different animals, this will allow an ecosystem to cope if one of those things goes missing. If we have a look at this very simplified food web, you can see, for example, that a magpie has two food sources. So it eats termites, that's this arrow here, and it also eats, if we follow this long arrow all the way down and round, it also eats crickets. So because there's a diversity of food sources for the magpie, um, the termites and the crickets, if one of those is damaged, so maybe there's um, some treatment of termites and a whole load of them die, the magpie will still have some food sources and that whole ecosystem will be more resilient. So if we can um, have biodiversity, then we can have a resilient ecosystem. But how do we conserve ecosystems and how do we maintain biodiversity? Well, I think it's really important because we are in Australia to look at some of the traditional Aboriginal methods for promoting biodiversity and being sustainable. Because um, Aboriginals ha have been um, custodians of this land for tens of thousands of years and have lived in it sustainably and promoted biodiversity for all that time. And we can learn from their traditional methods. So if we look at how they managed mangrove swamps, uh, they did seasonal collection from the mangrove swamps. So they would hunt mud crabs in mud crab season. Um, they would never take more than they needed. So there was no overfishing and no overhunting. And they also used mangrove swamps for traditional medicines um, and also uh, used it as a resource, like for example, taking bark to make um, canoes but they only removed what they needed. So minimal removal of, um, of seeds or of leaves or of bark. And if we think about whether this strategy was um, a good strategy or not, when we evaluate this strategy, 
we can see that it's actually a very strong strategy and a very positive strategy because it would encourage mangrove growth, support all the animals in the swamp, and allow the mangrove to do its job of cleaning the river as it flowed to the sea and protecting the coastline from storms. So that meant that the uh, mangrove swamp area was um, very effective in doing what it did. It maintained the biodiversity and it conserved that ecosystem. So these were good, eval good um, strategies for managing the mangrove swamp. The way that Aboriginal people managed the land um, was through the use of fire, um, but they didn't use hot fires, they used very low temperature fires. And you can see in this picture that the fire is very low to the ground. Um, it's called cool burning, they didn't allow it to get hot. And they burnt in small patches called mosaic patterns. Um, they only burnt at the right time in the season when it can be easily managed. And again, this is a very um, strong and clever strategy um, and it worked very well because it promotes the growth of native plants and it allowed native animals to thrive as they were able to move between the areas and not get pushed out by the fire um, and allowed new areas of growth for um, food for the different animals in the area. And it also reduced weed species or invasive species. So it got rid of the kind of plants that might compete with native plants and stop them growing there. So it maintained a high level of biodiversity in uh, the native species and in the native animals, so native plant species and native animal species. And we've got a lot to learn from how these traditional um, techniques helped to maintain the sustainability of these areas. So when we think about sustainability in general, we want to make sure that we don't overuse an ecosystem. We want to avoid polluting an ecosystem, try to avoid climate change because that's making uh, huge differences to our ecosystems. And we can promote understanding and education in these traditional management systems that have been successful for many, many years. So we can see what this snake has to say about this. Thanks, Mr. Snake. Biodiversity is the key.